Greetings everyone and welcome back to Lucas Brews. Now uh, previously on the channel I've done an inbox review of the IBG FW190 D9, the Cotbus early production. And uh, today we're going to be doing something special. We're going to be doing a little bit of a diorama using this aircraft. And uh, we're going to be depicting an FW190 that's had some engine problems and done a crash landing just on a riverbank. So we'll also be messing around with some of the Vallejo and Deluxe Material diorama range. Uh, I've been sent a couple by our wholesaler to give a little try and uh, have a little bit of a play around with. We've got some Create and Shape, which will be used as like the base for the diorama. So I'll probably build it up with some styrofoam and then use this for the actual kind of terrain forming. Um, so the, we'll be giving that a little go. Uh, and our, because it's a river bank, we're going to have a little bit of water. So we're going to be trying out some Aqua Magic. So this is like a one part resin. Uh, water based I believe, uh, very similar to the AK Interactive stuff I've used before but we'll be having a little go at this. Uh, and then we've also got this, making waves to create some ripples and that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's like a clear kind of paste that you apply on top of the Aqua Magic to create waves. Uh, and then we've also got some Vallejo weathering stuff here so I've just got a bit of mud and grass and some wet streaking effects. Uh, so I'll be using those on the aircraft to make it look like it's gone through a little bit of dirt as it crashes. Uh, and then it's in the water, so it'll obviously have a little bit of liquid stuff all over it. Uh, and then we've also got a little bit of water texture here. So I believe this is like a foam, a sea foam kind of texture. Uh, and I can apply it to create some foaming effects. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of like a white substance. That's what we'll be using in terms of supplies. Uh, now let's actually get into building this kit. So at the start, I drew up a little plan for the diorama and after I'd given all of the sprues a nice wash in some warm soapy water to get off any oil and stuff that was on them from the moulding process, I then assembled the engine and put it together using some Revell Contactor Professional. The engine was a little bit fiddly, however all the parts actually fitted surprisingly well for such a complex little piece. I cut out the cockpit halves and sanded away some of the excess sprue and then glued the seat and the joystick into position. Once the cockpit parts had dried, I then painted the cockpit two coats of Tamiya XF63 German Grey, and I painted the instrument panel XF1 flat black while it was on the sprue. I then assembled the firewall, which included some ammunition and some cannons, and also the glare shield that attaches to the instrument panel and the rest of the cockpit. Following the second coat of German Grey, I then painted the firewall and the mounts for the engine RLM Grey, which is Tamiya XF22. Since I wanted the engine details to be visible, I decided to cut off the engine cowling access hatches by using a sharp hobby knife to carefully cut them away at the seam line. I then painted the interior side walls of the cockpit and the engine bay the respective colours. I tried to use the decals included in the kit for both the side walls and also the main instrument panel, but due to the raised detail on those parts, it was difficult to get the decals to settle, even with a bit of Tamiya decal adhesive. In the end I got the main instrument panel decals on, but the side panels I'd later remove because they were too bubbly and just weren't sticking to the model. I painted the engine and also the ammunition bay, XF16 flat aluminium, before removing the decals on the side instruments and painting them XF1 flat black with a fine brush. I also painted some of the engine details XF1 flat black. I then used some XF2 flat white to paint some of the raised instrument details on the side walls along with some XF16 flat aluminium and later on some XF3 flat yellow. The kit includes some nice photo etched metal seat belts which I glued into place using some Gorilla Super Glue and used a pair of tweezers to move into position and once I was happy with that I painted the exhausts on the engine X31 titanium gold and used some flat earth and buff to paint the seat belts. I then used a bit of XF9 tank hull red to paint the glare shield cover. I painted a few highlights for the cockpit using some XF24 dark grey to simulate some lighter areas of grey and then I glued the cockpit to the firewall. I was once again really surprised with how well these parts fit, even once I'd glued the engine assembly and the cockpit to the bottom of the wing halves and the two fuselage halves together and then to the wing, it all fitted really excellently. The entire interior for the landing gear bay is made out of photo etch parts, which was a little bit fiddly, but I managed to assemble them using some tweezers to bend the parts into shape and get them into position, and some super glue to fix them into place. Overall, I thought the use of photo etch parts for the interior of the landing gear bay added a lot of extra detail that was very good, and I was very surprised to find that when I glued the wing top halves together that the fit was absolutely perfect. 
I then glued the elevators and the bottom part of the engine cowling to the rest of the fuselage and painted the interior of the landing in bay XF22 RLM grey in two coats. I used a sharp hobby knife to cut along one of the recessed panels on the outer part of the left wing and then I used my fingers and a bit of pressure to bend that part of the wing upwards as if it had been damaged in the crash. I then glued any damage I didn't want to have visible with the Revell Contactor Professional and then I glued the elevator into position as though there was no tension applied to the control column. Additional damage was done to the aircraft by using a set of side cutters to cut up the left side aileron so that the ribbing was exposed and I bent these struts for the landing gear and assembled the right landing gear so that it was half extended as if the wheels had been down but then got damaged during the crash. I also heavily bent up the landing gear bay doors just using my fingers before gluing them all together. The propeller was chopped up using a set of side cutters. Since the propellers on the FW190s were made out of wood, they would have splintered upon impact with anything. I then used a Dremel to carefully sand out some dents on the edges of the howling, on the wings, and also on the propeller spinner hub which would have been made out of metal. I then gently sanded and then used a brush to clear away some of the excess plastic before once again using the Dremel to drill out a hole in one of the engine cowlings where the air intake for what I believe is the turbocharger is positioned. I painted the aircraft once it had been assembled in pretty much the same way I'd do any aircraft, starting with the lightest colour which was RLM 76 early war variation and applying it as much as possible in the same direction as air would flow over the aircraft to make sure that there are less brush strokes and the paint looks more uniform. You'll also notice that I build the paint up in several layers, starting with the first layer where you can still see the plastic colour underneath, and by the second layer it's starting to be a little bit more solid and a little bit more RLM 76-ish. With the lighter colours completed, it was time to look at doing the darker camouflage colours on the top of the aircraft. The instructions called for RLM 81 and RLM 82, which are two different shades of green, however RLM 81 also comes in more of a brown shade in a different variation. I did not have either of these colours in the usual AK Interactive range that I used for most German aircraft and the underside for this one, so I decided to instead experiment with some of the Vallejo colours. I matched up two Vallejo greens that were supposed to be 81 and 82, and they were 70.823 Luftwaffe Camouflage Green and 70.892 Yellow Oliver. I started painting the lighter colour on the upper surface which was RLM 82 or in this case 892 yellow olive. I painted the coats in the similar fashion to the previous colours of RLM 76 with two layers on the wings and the upper surfaces and a single layer of dabbed modelling on the tail section which was then later covered with some RLM 76 to soften the effects. I then formed and then filled in the shapes for RLM 81 using 823 Luftwaffe Camouflage Green, however I found that this particular colour by Vallejo was probably a little bit closer to the green variation of RLM 81 rather than the brown one, and it didn't quite look as good as I wanted it to on this aircraft. So in the end I ended up painting over it with a layer of XF51 khaki drab from Tamiya. It wasn't super accurate, but I thought it was a little bit closer and I was quite happy with the final result looking like a little bit of a kind of faded brown. I painted it over the aforementioned camouflage patterns and added a few dabs onto the tail before then painting XF1 flat black and XF2 white on the identification tail bands on the back of the aircraft instead of the decal and to paint the propeller hub and the spinner. A bit of XF22 RLM grey was painted onto the ribs of the ailerons, and after some silver was painted onto the landing gear, I then applied the decals. There are quite a lot of decals in this kit, and all of them were of exceptional quality. They didn't silver, and they didn't tear or really fold in on each other all that much, uh, and they were quite nice and thin, so you got a lot of nice surface detail. After I'd applied the decals with some water, I then dabbed a little bit of Vallejo decal softener on top of them and later some Tamiya decal adhesive. The only thing I did that was out of the ordinary with this kit was to use a little bit of Ushi vendor wire to create some of the antennas on the rear of the tail and super glued them to the canopy. And then I did my usual weathering practices, which I go into a little bit more depth in other videos. And with that all done, the model was finally completed. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the results for this first attempt at a crashed aircraft. I tried a lot of techniques that I was not fully familiar with, like doing the dents with the Dremel and chopping up parts. So the kit itself fits together really excellently. There's so much detail crammed into it. The photo etching is really nice. It's a good touch. 
The landing gear bays especially have some nice details and the engine and cockpit are absolutely outstanding. I, I gotta admit I felt a little bit criminal chopping up parts of the kit and damaging it to create the uh, the the effects from the crash. It is a little bit expensive coming in usually around about the 40 to 45 dollar mark depending on where you get it and which variation of this mold you get. There are a few different versions that IBG have done of the FW190 but I definitely recommend it because although that is a little bit expensive for what you get it's really quite decent and it's definitely a great kit for the more experienced modeler. I probably wouldn't recommend it for beginners just because there are so many fine details and finer parts and you've got to be very careful when you're doing it. But if you do it all correctly, you'll get a model that fits together surprisingly well for the extra interior details and all of that that come with this kit. And I apologize for not going into more depth with the weathering, uh, particularly the metal chipping effects in this video. But that's something I've covered in a lot of other videos. I always do add a little bit of metal chipping. In this particular instance, I did do it a little bit excessively to create the effects from the crash. And I will be adding a few extra details, such as some of the small antennas and small bits as um, part of the diorama, and also doing a little bit of weathering with some mud and some uh, gun smoke and exhaust stains and some oil streaks and that sort of thing. Um, but I'll cover that in more depth in, as I said, part two of building the diorama. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And a uh, special shout out to my wonderful patrons for helping me fund my videos, uh, you guys are wonderful people and uh, if you want to join my patrons and see exclusive content and help support my channel, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description of my video. And uh, thank you very much for watching and until the next video, model on!